Scotland. Renowned for its castles, lochs, wildlife, and stunning scenery. It's also a country that boasts a rich and proud history, from Mary Queen of Scots to the Battle of Culloden. But for me, as an ancient historian, what's even more fascinating is when you go further back in time, beyond Scotland's written history, when you delve into this land's prehistoric past and the many mysteries still surrounding it. Over three episodes, I'm going on a journey across Scotland to explore its distant past. With the help of leading experts along the way, I'll investigate the evidence. Monumental architecture constructed thousands of years ago. A level of building that would be challenging to any master builder today, that's for sure. New archaeological excavations unearthing the huge influence of this land. When you look at the map of Britain and see Orkney at that kind of pivotal position, it's almost like turning the map of Britain on its head. And incredible discoveries that are revealing who these ancient people were, how they lived, and how they interacted with a much wider prehistoric world. Join me as we explore the extraordinary enigmatic world of prehistoric Scotland. The Ring of Brodsker is one of the great archaeological jewels in Neolithic Orkney's crown. But that stone circle over there, well, it didn't exist in isolation. It was part of a much larger landscape bustling with human activity. And here, on the nearby headland, an ongoing excavation has revealed so much more about this. This is the Ness of Brodga, home to one of the most significant and incredible archaeological excavations currently underway on the British Isles. The discoveries here have shed so much extraordinary light about the people of Neolithic Orkney and how they lived. To find out more about the dig, I'm meeting Dr Nick Card. Nick, it's really exciting to finally be at the excavation, but what do we think the Ness of Brodga was? Well, the Ness was in use for well over a thousand years, in fact over 1200 years, so spanning the whole of the, the, the Neolithic period in Orkney, and through that thousand years its meaning, its function would, would have changed. But if you wanted to try and encapsulate what it was in its kind of heyday, I think it was a place of gathering place where people came from right the way across Orkney but also from much further afield and what do people do when they gather? They eat. They feasted here in very grand scale. And so what has the archaeology revealed about the layout of this site? Sort of almost been planned. It's not like town planning, but a lot of the structures, particularly in the phase that we're investigating just now, where you have these very large peered structures, all arranged around this kind of central paved area, complete with a, the stump of a standing stone, that they were laid out to respect each other. But they were also contained within a major walled enclosure, which initially we thought enclosed the whole site, but we now know it just consists of a major wall at the north end facing the Ring of Brodga, another wall at the south end, but the two bodies of water creating kind of natural boundaries for the other two sides of the site. Nick and his team have been working at the Nessa Brodga for some 20 years now. In total, they believe that there are probably more than 100 Neolithic structures on the site, less than half of which have been excavated. And as you walk around, you start to realise how varied these visible structures were in their size and their splendour. From monumental, immaculately looking buildings that would have rested amongst the most spectacular in northwest Europe, to more peculiar structures like this one, complete with unusual masonry features such as these prone orthostats lying on their edge. Rich in material, 
The Ness is a jewel in the crown of British archaeology. And so how important do we think the Ness of Brodgo was back in Neolithic times? I think it was a site that was probably renowned throughout Britain. We find material culture here that came from, for instance, pitchstone, a type of volcanic glass, a bit like obsidian that's found only on the, on the island of Arran off the southwest coast of Scotland. We find mace heads here from the western isles of Scotland. We find an axe blank from the great Neolithic axe factories in Langdale in the Lake District. Some of the pottery is most closely resembles some of the pottery from southern Britain. The art is paralleled by art from the island. So a whole range of different kind of influences coming in. So I think that this was a place, maybe a pilgrimage at one stage of its life. And I think we see people coming here from not just across Orkney, from much, much further afield. So it's when you look at the map of Britain and see Orkney at that kind of pivotal position right at the tip of Scotland with access to the east and west coast, I think it was very important then. And it is almost like turning the map of Britain on its head. In its heyday, you can imagine the Nessabrodga being a settlement designed to awe and accommodate people venturing here from all over Orkney, Britain, and possibly beyond. This was a great centre of the Neolithic world. And even the smallest artefacts unearthed here have provided invaluable insight into what life was like 5,000 years ago. So Roy, we've got some really interesting artefacts here. These are all to do with pottery, is it? This is all pottery. It's called groovedware pottery. It's very distinctive and we have about 100,000 pieces of it, wow. which is by far the biggest collection of groovedware pottery in the country. It, um, it has an interesting history. Uh, it, it, the shape of the pot is very similar. It's either straight-sided or a bit flower potty. The oldest dates we have for groovedware, although you get it right down what's now England and in Ireland, but the old dates, oldest dates we have are here in Orkney. Now I'm not saying this particular site because we can't pin it down like that, but the oldest dates seem to be here and then we can trace it uh, and other Neolithic sites as we go south into Scotland and down to England and over to Ireland. We're not saying that people tucked a big pot under their arm and got into a boat and rowed off to Clacton and Sea or anything like that. It's the idea of the decoration which must have really seized people's imagination. The earliest stuff was decorated with incisions and that is patterns cut into the exterior surface of the pot with a sharp point. That pot was really well made, it was well fired, and then they moved on to cordons, applied cordons. Now cordon is a strip of clay which they stuck onto the exterior of the pot in patterns and then they could take little decoration, decorative uh, slits and, and cuts into it as well. As the Neolithic progressed, this cordoned grooved ware pottery became the new fashion, gradually overtaking the incised Unston ware pottery we saw earlier. But one of the most striking things you notice from some of these small shards of pot is the colour. When you think about it, there's absolutely no reason why there shouldn't be colour in the Neolithic. But you look at the site, you've seen the site, it's quite grey. So it's too easy to assume, oh well, the Neolithic must have been a bit grey as well, a bit boring. No, nope, they had colour. This is a cordon, one of these, but it's come off. It's, it's detached from the pot. You see, it's got a flat back. Yes, yes. They're very easy to recognise when we're digging because it's got a flat back. But it's been decorated with hematite, which is an iron ore you get in Orkney. So they've applied the hematite and that would have been a rich red 5,000 years ago, but it's not bad now. It's pretty old and it's still got a bit of colour to its face. And it's also really interesting, isn't it? That you said that's hematite, that's an iron ore, mm -hmm. but they're using it for decoration hundreds and hundreds of years before the Iron Age is even a thing. Oh, well, many years, yes. Many, many. It's fascinating how small shards of seemingly insignificant pottery can give us such a valuable insight into the vibrant, colourful nature of a place like the Nessabrodka some 5,000 years ago. But pottery also gives us an extraordinary insight into their diet. Yeah, we can analyse um, the pots to find out what they were using to hold them for, or the storage, etc., but also cooking. Um, if you find a bit of um, burnt blacky stuff inside a pot, you can analyse it and you can find out what it was. 
Actually, we don't even have to go as far as that now because the pot is porous, it's low fired. So if you had some meat inside it and you were cooking it, or anything indeed, uh, it releases lipids, fats, and they soak into the wall of the pot. So all we have to do, even if we don't have any black gungy stuff, is take out a little piece of the pot wall and analyse it. And the studies we've done so far are, they're about 50-50 milk and meat. So that was their diet, though there is a problem. They were lactose intolerant, which means they couldn't take milk. It made it People still are in some places. It bloats you up and makes you feel really rotten. So if you process it into a yogurt or a cottage cheese type of thing, you can eat it perfectly well. So we think they were processing milk as well. And so what can this pottery tell us about the economics of this place? Well, they can tell us that they were very largely cattle based, although they were growing barley as well, because you can find traces of that. Um, a lot of the, the, the methods of analysis, the scientific methods of analysis have really improved recently. So we're hoping um, in the next oh, two to three years to have some really detailed analysis of the contents of the pot. And that might bring up some surprises. There might be something else in there that we don't know about yet. The Nesebrodka excavations have already revealed so much about Neolithic Orkney, and no doubt the work of the archaeologists and volunteers here will continue to unearth extraordinary artefacts in the years ahead. 5,000 years ago, this was an incredibly important meeting place, but it doesn't seem to have been a residential settlement. And that's what I want to learn more about next. Thanks for watching this video on the History Hit YouTube channel. You can subscribe right here to make sure you don't miss any of our great films that are coming out. Or if you are a true history fan, check out our special dedicated history channel, historyhit.tv. You're going to love it.